Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this will be our last lecture of Big Data Hadoop tutorial. And in this lecture, I am not going to teach you anything. This is just to congratulate you that you have entered the Big Data world. So if you are following along, if you have watched every video of this full course and then all the hands-on tutorials, then congratulations. We have made it together and you are now an industry ready entry level big data developer and you should be proud of yourself and let me tell you why. So in this lecture we have seen all about what is big data, how to handle big data and also Hadoop ecosystem. But not just Hadoop ecosystem, we have also explored some cutting edge tools and technologies which we can integrate with our Hadoop ecosystem and handle big data at very large scale. Because let's be honest, in the today's world, many companies cannot only rely on Hadoop ecosystem. They also need some real-time processing, also they need high-speed batch processing which cannot be provided by the MapReduce. So to sum it up, we have seen how we can ingest, process and analyze the big data using the Hortonworks platform. So if you are very new to big data or you are just brushing up your basics or else you are coming from a whole other background then this tutorial will be enough for you to start your career in the big data. But you have to make sure that you have to practice more and also learn some complex algorithms and logics because in this tutorial we are just dealing with the small data sets. You have to be ready to process big data files and also opt optimize your workflow as needed. And also if you are not clear about any topic in our tutorial then you can definitely ask me out or you can watch the video once again for better understanding. So let's now discuss what we have learned in this tutorial. Yeah, so let's discuss what we have learned in this course. So first of all, we have seen what is distributed processing and how Hadoop processes the data on the basis of a master slave architecture and also how we can horizontally scale the system to handle big data. So here we have seen what is the storage layer which is nothing but the Hadoop distributed file system and how it stores the data in a distributed manner. Also we have seen the YARN which is the resource management and it is also known as yet another resource negotiator. We have also seen some introductory part of Mesos which is another resource manager and you can integrate it with different services like Apache Spark. So talking about Spark, we have the another layer which is processing layer. So we have seen how we can process the data by various tools. So the basic tool we have seen is MapReduce which splits up your workflows into the mappers and reducer tasks and processes it on your worker nodes. So that was very slow and it is not that efficient if we compare it to the other services which we have discussed in this tutorial. So the first one was Apache Spark which is very faster due to its in-memory computation as well as the direct acyclic graph which is again a next level thing and it's very fast from the MapReduce. And also we have seen the Hive, which is the SQL over Hadoop as you can notice in this figure. So it will just convert your SQL queries into the MapReduce job. But it has some issues because let's be honest, MapReduce is very slow. So Hive can also integrate with Tez, which is the execution engine for big data. So Hive and Tez together can give you a better performance like Apache Spark. And we have also compared those performances in a separate tutorial. So if you are interested, just check that lecture. So we have also seen the Apache drill, which provides a capability to run SQL queries on the data, which is stored in different data sources. We have also seen, we have also seen the relational databases, which I cannot see in this figure, but we have seen how we can work with MySQL using the scope where we have imported the data from MySQL directly into Hive using scoop tool. So this scoop utility will allow us to import and export the big data files in a batch way. And it works like a charm. It integrates various services and we have seen MySQL database in our tutorial. We have also seen the NoSQL databases, which is best thing in the business now. So it gives us the flexibility to change our schema over time. So it is well suitable for the agile development which nowadays is very popular. So we have seen Apache Edgebase, which is native to Hadoop and well integrates with HDFS as well. Also, we have seen the Cassandra, which is again a highly available NoSQL database. So it's like a column family database. And also we have seen the MongoDB and how it integrates with our Hadoop ecosystem. 
so mongodb stores the documents so which is nothing but a json format documents which again provides the flexibility to change the scheme over time and also we have seen the cap theorem where we have compared all these three databases including the relational databases and how they compare to each other and which database will be right for you then we have seen the pig which is not that much popular but it has its own language which is pig latin which is like a sql like language for processing big data in your hadoop ecosystem and it well integrates with mapreduce as again it converts the pig script into mapreduce and then processes it on the worker nodes and then we have also seen like the ambari which is the web ui to control all your services then we have the zookeeper for coordination and management where we store the state of the services so this was all about the batch processing then we have also seen the stream processing where we have ingested and process the real time data using different services we have seen kafka which is a very popular open source platform for ingesting and processing big data again we have saw the flume which is again used for ingesting real time data from various sources and it can also integrates well with other things then we have also seen some stream processing engines like apache spark streaming which is again not a fully real time but it is a micro batch processing engine where we have process data streams all in real time and at last we have seen the services which are flink and storm which are again the same provided by apache and used for processing real time data so i know these are so many services and it will be very confusing but if you understand it properly and you know the basic architecture and how it works then that will be enough for you to get started so if you have any issues in any of the services i'll recommend you to again watch that lecture so that you will get clear understanding and then you can try it on your own and practice it with some simple hands on tutorials there are numerous courses are available on the internet and i'll also be providing to you so the possibilities are endless you can mix and match these services to build your data pipeline and show your talent to the world you can also learn data visualization tool like power bi to build your dashboard on top of your relational data so as i said earlier that possibilities are endless and i congratulate you again to complete this course and become a big data developer and in future if you have any doubts you can let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible so i'll see you in the next course for more tutorials please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching